Hey guys, today's video is going to be about fitting the ID Core Android Auto Apple CarPlay uh, box to my XFR. And I got this from uh, Unique Auto Developments. And I've been sitting on this thing for probably a few months now because I just haven't had time to fit it. It's got instructions on how to fit it and how to take your particular car's dash apart. So it's very easy to do for somebody who's never taken their dash apart before. I kind of know what to do already because I have had my excess dash apart before and uh, I'm really not scared in taking it apart. In here we have a bunch of cables. This is the box itself over here. And then this is the main power loom which links to your car's original loom and then plugs into the ID core unit and then plugs into the back of your screen. So I'm going to show you guys taking the dash apart first. Uh, it's very, very easy. So let's get to it. Before you begin, just make sure you set your registers in the open position. And to do that, we're going to climb it, settings, and then just select always open instead of auto. And when you turn your car off, your registers will not close. The reason we are doing this is so that your registers maintain their current memory. If you don't do that, your registers will probably work fine, but you're going to find as time goes by, you're going to find one's going to be closing a little faster than the other one. One's going to be lazier than the other one to open. And it's just going to be a pain in the butt to have it reset because you're going to need a technician to plug an OBD2 into the car and reset and relearn the registers opening. We just want to open this corner piece over here and I can hear my wires <laughs> moving around. Just undo your door rubber a little bit so that it can come off. It's got these two locating pins in there and you do need to remove the door rubber in order to, to get it off. And then we also need to take off this trim over here. Now my particular trim has been off the car quite a lot. There are several plugs here that you need to undo. So the one is for your uh, glove box button. The other one is for your center buttons. And then I have an additional one here for my, uh, my ambient lighting, which I just need to undo. This is the plug for your glove box. This is the plug for your center buttons. And then I have this additional little plug here for my ambient lighting, which sits underneath this thing over here. We need to undo these two torque screws over there. And these are T20s. So there's also a clip here that we're gonna undo. And in here, there's a T20 over there and there's a T20 in there. So if you're looking at the dash and you've got your trim off, it's that one and that one. I already have these two undone over here. So I'm just gonna undo these two over here. And then we just need to pry this out. There we go. And then using our trim tool, pull it away from the edge of the dash. Once you have this off, just press down on the tab and you can release the register's plug. Once you have this piece off, what you want to do is you also want to remove this trim in between here because we want to get in here to bring our USB cable and our auxiliary cable through. So we need to undo that T20 over there. And then this thing just unplugs and pulls up. You can see there are 
three little plugs that hold this in place and there's a locating pin over there and there's a locating pin down there. So there's another bolt down here that we just need to undo as well. I just want to check, I think there's another one down there. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six bolts in total holding this thing on. And then I know there's another one up there, so I'm just going to remove that now. I just need to get a little screwdriver in here and I've got my camera balancing on my steering wheel so it's kind of difficult for me to see but you don't need a lot of pressure to get that off and it looks like a T20 as well. Now having undone that screw over there we just need to undo the little T20 screw over there and we already unscrewed the big bolt that was over here. So now we just need to pull this trim away and then just wedge it out from underneath here and I'm just going to remove it to the point where we can get it completely out of the way. So I'm just using a trim tool, a flat trim, trim tool to get in here and to assist me in unclipping this from the dash and so I'm just going to move the steering wheel back up and that will give me better access to getting this out and then we can just undo the cables the plugs for the registers Now we have just a couple of screws that we need to undo over here and they look like T20s as well. We can now release the unit from its resting place. Now you do have these locating pins over here that will help you locate it back in place when you put it all back together. So don't worry about whether you're going to be able to centralize it when you reinstall. I've removed the undercover tray entirely and in order to remove them there are three locating pins that sit in these holes over here. So basically to get these pins out you just push to one side. You'll see there's a small piece there. Take the larger piece and just push it to the side and it will unclip very easily. So I think for now I'm going to go with their recommendation of putting it down here but later down the line I might find a better solution for that. It's not very heavy uh, so yeah I don't think it'll be a problem putting it down there for now but it would be nice to have a different place to put it. I see there's enough room back here to install it there but then one would have to pretty much wrap it in something and you can't because it needs to breathe so it's got vents and it looks like it can get fairly hot if it's operating for a long period of time so i'm just going to connect the wi-fi antenna now i'm just going according to their recommendations here so i need to plug this power wire in now. We're going to run all our cables down to the footwell so I'm going to get the power cable for this unit through here and out the bottom just so we have it there. Let's get the head unit out. So this grey plug that you took out of the back of the head unit is just going to plug into the female socket of the ones they supplied you and this end plugs into your the back of your head unit. The LCD K 
cable plugs into the back of your head unit. You'll see that you unplugged a blue LCD uh, plug from the back of your head unit. You're not going to do anything with that one anymore. You're just going to leave it um, and you're going to use their plug or their cable. This plug will go into the back of your head unit and this side of the cable will go into the back of the uh, ID core unit. So this cable we are also going to run down here into the footwell. Now I'm just going to plug the power in here as well and a nice thud. Now there are three other things that we need to plug into the ID core unit. The one is the mic, then we have the auxiliary cable and the auxiliary is important because it needs to pump audio uh, instructions coming through from the Android system or the CarPlay system in through the car's speakers. This plug is for, this will plug into the back of the ID core unit and it's your USB. So for phones that do not have Android 11, you have to use the USB in order to use the system. Here's the little unit over here and we've got our plugs down here now. So I'm just gonna plug it in, give it some power. And then our LCD cable, we'll plug that into there. I'm going to just also quickly plug in the USB. And then I can deal with that cable separately as well because I need an extension for the USB. They don't give you a very long one. And that one's gonna go in over here. There we go. We are going to plug the audio socket into this socket here that they provide you. And we're gonna just plug that into there. And it's just a two-way socket. It's a 3.5 millimeter socket. And this will go into your audio jack inside your armrest. Now it does take a while for the unit to boot up for the first time. So that's just something we need to keep in mind and um, wait for it to boot up. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's reset itself now and that is what I want to see. So I just want to go to the unit and there we go. So I plugged my phone in and it is working. I've shown you guys in previous videos how to remove this overhead console. So I'll put a link to that video um, at the top here now. But if we look here, we can see on my driver's side, there is already a mic over there, but there's nothing over there. They've got a little uh, rubber tab in here, which I'm just gonna take out and then place my mic there uh, with some tape to hold it down. What I've done is I've removed that little grommet and I've wedged their mic in here using their little clip that they supply with the mic. And I'm gonna leave that uh, wind deflector on there um, because that will make for the mic listening to you a little bit better. I'm just going to route that cable in here. And then what I've done is I've pulled the cable through the, the top here. You can actually see a little bit of light if you look in there. And I've pulled it out the front over here. Now this is gonna enable me to bring it down to the unit. And all I need to do is remove this A-pillar trim over here and then I can route the mic cable all the way down and then bring it down to the unit underneath the footwell. So now my mic is in place, I put my overhead console back, I run the cable down here and all along there and then it comes down here. I run it behind the airbag. This is my mic cable here, this one here. And I've looped it over this pipe over here and what I've done is I've just brought it down the side and then it's going to go through inside behind the glove box. So as you can see my car is currently the sum of its parts all lying on the dash and 
<laughs> it's not looking pretty but I've got my mic plugged in there now and all I'm going to do now is button all of this up and I have done videos on how to remove this trim before I'm not going to show it again I don't have enough time I've had complaints my videos are too long and I take too long to get to the point so getting to the point I'm now going to do the USB and the auxiliary cable in the center console unclip this thing at the back and then over here there's a screw holding this entire thing in place undo that screw and you can then easily get your hands underneath here and what I've done is my cables are here right and they go in and underneath and what I've done is I've removed my car's USB uh, auxiliary socket here and if you remove that whole thing you can bring your wires through here from underneath and I've just filed a little hole on each corner so that my cable has space and then I can clip this thing back into place I got a flashlight here just to show you guys what the final result looks like but I had to file quite a quite a bit of the um, the edge away in the corners in order to get the cables to clear the fitting of the USB the, the OEM USB uh, housing here so the wires are not being pinched at all and I made sure that I filed I used a little file just to file the plastic away and I made sure that I did it in the corners because there are no clips in the corners so if you're planning on doing a similar setup for your car just make sure you do it in the corners where there are no clips check where your clips are otherwise your housing is not going to clip in properly and um, as you can see mine is fitting really nice and flush and I'm very happy with this result so this this cable is my USB which will plug into my phone and um, this cable over here is for the audio to come from your ID Core Android box and uh, that plugs into the, aux the auxiliary socket so just to show you guys on my Android uh, auto I've, I've got an app called AIMP and that is a music app and if we click on that it's going to show um, you know the music that's on my phone so we can scroll through all of that but if I I cannot listen to it right now because and it's going to show you down there that it's playing because if I go to my main menu and I go to audio if you go to where it says my music and you select the input aux we are now listening to music coming from the ID core system now the nice thing about playing your music through the system is that you can forward music um, from just want to turn this down you can forward music from the screen you can't use your steering wheel controls but if I press back I can go to the previous song or I can go to the next song and it's extremely you know useful that way as you know I put my mic in here so here is the car's OEM mic and my mic is sitting there and as you can see the instructions that I'm giving the system are being heard if I just speak in a normal voice navigate to OR Tambo that's our airport by the way and because I've turned the, vol the volume down um, it's you're not going to hear a voice and there you have it guys so I'm quite thrilled that I've managed to get a really good solution where the cables are going because I wasn't happy having cables just lying around everywhere in the car I want to be able to tuck them back in the armrest and close the armrest and have a nice neat look so I think having the mic up there as well is also a very good solution so if you have already fitted one you can always just run your mic 
up through there and you can change it. Um, you know, it's not cast in stone. So the next video is probably going to be on reconditioning my car seats. I already have all the products that I need and um, I will show you guys how I do that. <laughs> it's going to be quite interesting. It's the first time I've ever done something like that, but yeah. Next up is a subscriber ride, so stay tuned for that. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend ahead. Cheers. Bye.